your mates to cheat on you, do you? Look, okay, Ange, if you've got something to say, say it outright. It's rather what you've got to say to me, innit? All right, I lied. I'm sorry I told you a lie. Then was with that woman. What you gonna do about it? Knock your bloody block off. I had to back up Pete's story. He made me. Major joke. You're the toughest old boot I know. You stood up to old Ma Bill when you and Pete got married. Nobody makes you do nothing. Stay put. All right, Ange. If no one makes me do nothing, who makes you stick to Mr. Big About Tan here? Why stick with him if he's got someone else? Cap, not him. Oh, that's what makes it bad for the rest of us. Look, I'm sorry if my old man don't agree with you, but I thought I was the one who made me marriage bed and had to lie in it. Or oh, not as the case may be. And you ain't civilised. Oh, and it's civilised to have a mistress on the side, is it? Expect everyone else to cover up for you. You've made me look a right fool with best mate. Well. Perhaps me and Ange can find a little sack to do in the afternoons. Oh, no, Kath. A big summing would be better. Get up them stairs before I lay you out. Oh, at last. He's getting physical. Still does what I tell her in the end, eh? Then I'm the one with a fist, ain't I? Find a bit of yeah? please. Customer, make sure Pete has a drink. Call yourself men. What's up, Pete Bill? Cat got your tongue? You can have all the other bits you're so proud of and all. Yeah, Cap, girl, get a move on. We are going up west. I'm right with you. I've watched him. Last thing at night, first thing in the morning, wondering what he's done wrong. It's breaking him up and it's breaking me up to watch him. Well, that's how mothers are with their sons. It's natural. <gasps> oh, so you think I should just sit back and watch while you're playing your little games with him, eh? God, it was only a little while ago you were breaking your heart about Simon standing you up and treating you badly. Have you forgotten how that felt? No, and it helped a lot to talk to you. So don't give me the doting mother bit. I can't stand to see anyone being hurt, not just Ian, anyone. What Simon's doing to you, you're doing to Ian. It's not fair, Donna. He's done nothing to hurt you. I know that. So why do it? Because I need him. Oh, what? I want to get close to him. What for? Just to see how far he falls when you dump him over my dead body. Getting closer to Ian means I get closer to you, Cathy. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? It's you. I want to get close to you. I want to get to know you. I couldn't think of any other way. You're my mother, Cathy. Look, it's been said. We both know the score. Let's just leave it there, shall we? What? You've told me who you are, and I'm not denying it. I'm really sorry for everything. I'm I understand what you've been going through. But listen, Donna, if we're going to have any sort of peace in our lives, let's keep this conversation to ourselves, eh? Are you ashamed of me? Of course I'm not. But I've got Ian to consider. And P. This is my home, my life. There's just no place for you. It's not possible. You can see that, can't you? No, I can't. Well, you know I can't tell them. Why not? Why not? Well, think about it, tell Donna. Them. They have a right to know. I want them to know. I want the whole world to know. But you can pack that in. I just won't have That's it. That's not fair. What are you going to do, ruin all our lives? Apart from anything else, Ian is in no fit state to take another bombshell. He's my brother. If he's your brother, why make up to him like you Because have? I love him like a brother. And what about New Year's Eve? You call that performance sisterly love? OK, I was drunk. I went too far. But knowing you as his sister? That's disgusting. You can't tell him. No, it'd finish him. Oh, no. We mustn't hurt Ian, must we? Don't I count? It's okay for you to lie, but not me. Oh, no, nothing's okay for me. All right, then. I'll find my father. You can't? Oh, that's right. He died, didn't he? How do I know that's true? Because it is. What about his mother, his father, brothers, sisters? I don't know. We lost touch. Oh, very convenient. Well, that's okay. I found you. I'll find him. Oh, let it rest, Donna. Why should I? Every child has a right to know about its parents. What was he like? What was his name? No! I have a right, damn you! Tell me about him. Was he tall, fat, nice sense of humor, a bit of a tearaway? Did you love him? Did he love you? Did you tell him you were pregnant? Did he ask you to oh, marry you? I'm not taking any more of this. You said what you wanted to say and I've explained. I haven't started yet. Well, that's where you're wrong. You listen to me and get this in your head. I don't want you near me. I don't want you near Ian and I don't want you in the square. I'm not hearing this. Well, I'll say it again for you. You're leaving, Donna. Now. You've caused nothing but upset everywhere you've been, and someone's got to put a stop to it. I'm your daughter. You're nothing here. Never have been, never will be. Is that plain enough? Look, please, Cavie. Pack your please. bags, Donna. I don't ever want to see you again.
Well, at first I thought he wanted to talk about his problems, but before I knew it, we were talking about me and Pete, and he, he said he knew me better than Pete, so I stood up to go. But he made no sexual advances to you at this point? No. So you weren't too concerned? Not really. More uneasy than concerned. You stood up to go? He forced you to stay? Not, not the first time. He said I was just being silly. That there was nothing wrong with us sitting there and talking. And I think by this time, I knew he was after more than just talk. Why was that? I don't know. His whole attitude. Something told me it wasn't right. The female alarm bell starts to ring. Yeah. He kept asking me if I found him attractive, and I kept saying he wasn't unattractive, but I was a happily married woman, and him being attractive or unattractive didn't matter either way. He was... Go on. And he tried to kiss me, but I didn't let him, I promise. I stood up to go. There was no way I was going to stay. But he grabbed me and tried to kiss me again, and I started shouting at him, and I managed to push him away and make for the door. The next thing I know, he's grabbed me again, saying he knew why I stayed for a drink, that I was asking for it. But it's not true. And then he, he started on about, about not feeling guilty and... And, uh, um. And then he forced me. You didn't struggle? Yes, I did. But he was too strong. And this took place in the living room? Yes. And this was full sexual intercourse? Yes. Look, I know it's very painful, but can you tell me how that actually came about? He, uh... He held me against the wall and said he would hurt me. He said he'd hurt me if I kept on struggling, but I didn't stop. And how did he hold you against the wall? Oh, he was holding me wrists and, and just pinning me there with his body. And I, I tried to get away, but I couldn't. And the more I struggled, the tighter he held. And then he started to kiss me and I just turned away from him. Even then, I didn't think he'd do it. And then he, uh, he forced me down on the floor. I was so scared. I was really scared. And then he, uh, he forced me down on the floor and somehow, Somehow he was holding uh, my hands with, with one hand. And then he, uh, and then he, then he started to undo me blouse. And I said, please, please, please don't, James, please don't. But he just went on. And I was, I was crying and he was just like an animal. And I hated him. I hated him. If I'd have had a knife, I'd have killed him. I'd have killed him there and then. And he, uh, he started to push up my skirt. And I knew, uh, I knew I couldn't get away. I knew I couldn't get away. And then he hurt me. He hurt me so much. I couldn't move my heart. My heart, I couldn't move me. He just kept hurting me and hurting me. OK, love. <laughs> It's all right, it's all right. We'll have a break now. Come on. <laughs> OK. Sorry I messed up lunch. That's OK. As Ian said, we've got the rest of our lives to sort this out. Just wanted to say thank you, that was all. It's been held these last few months, hasn't it? Yeah. Said a lot of things I shouldn't have said. Yeah, me too. Not very good with words, I suppose. Oh, I knew that when I married you. You see, Kat, I saw you slipping away and I didn't know what to do to get you back. I know. I've done a lot of things wrong. I know a lot of it's my fault. Hey, it ain't you that's changed, it's me. Ah, <laughs> not you, Kay. I mean, I thought you had. But when the chips were down, there you was. Come up, Trumps. Same as usual. Look, Pete, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about that money. Hey? I gave it to you because I was sorry for you. I'm still fond of you, I suppose. Maybe I still love you, in a way. Well, there you are, then. But I could afford it. I've been saving up for quite a few months now. Good. Looks like we're going to need it. I'm going to need it, Pete. I expect you was wondering what I was getting up to today. No. I talked that one over with Ian as well. You don't have to answer to me every moment you're out of my sight. Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. 
I sold the knitting machine. Yeah, Pauline said you traded it in. No, I sold it. And I sold a fair bit of stock I'd lying about and all. I got a good price for it. Do you know what, Kay? You got a good business brain. Well, I made a success out of that store, just like I said I would. Yep, proved me wrong. That ain't why I did it. Anyway, it's over now. I'm giving it up. I'm leaving Albert Square, Pete. And I'm leaving you. I'm sorry, that don't really seem adequate after all these years, but I really don't know what to say. I'm not the same person you married, we both know that. And it ain't just because of the rape. It started long before. I wanted... Well, I want something more out of my life. Something I don't think you could ever give me. And that ain't your fault, because I didn't feel like that when you married me. But I've changed now. And I don't mean I, I think I'm better or cleverer than you. I'm just different. I'll always be fond of you. But we've got nothing in common anymore. Nothing to talk about. It's all been said. We did have something great, Pete. I know that. Honest, we did. But it's gone. There's nothing now. I spend half my time trying to avoid you and longer and longer on the stall, anything. Because I can't face up to the fact that there's nothing left. The longer it goes on, the worse it's going to be, and, and that's not fair on either of us. There's one of us got to go, Pete. And it's better that it's me. You belong here. It's your square there, your streets, your family's here. Your real family. The one that you really care about. I don't think I ever belonged to that, not even in the beginning. I expect you hoped I would, but... I'm afraid I let you down there and all, didn't I? And I'd always be letting you down, Pete. Because I don't want what you want anymore, and I've given up pretending now. So... See, I've got to go, and I? But I really am sorry, Pete. I never wanted it to come to this. I... It's the only way, though. I'm so sorry. That I, Philip Mitchell, that I, Philip Mitchell, do take thee, Catherine Beale, do take thee, Catherine Beale, to be my lawful wedded wife, to be my lawful wedded wife. Please, will you take the ring that you're giving to Philip, place it on the tip of his finger, and say these words. I give you this ring. Sorry, I'm late. I give you this ring. As a token of our marriage. As a token of our marriage. And I call upon these persons here present. And I call upon these persons here present. To witness. To witness. That I, Catherine Beale. That I, Catherine Beale. To take thee, Philip Mitchell. To take thee, Philip Mitchell. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Just hold hands again, please. Catherine and Philip, you have both made the declaration prescribed by law and have made a solemn and binding contract with each other in the presence of your witnesses here today. It is therefore my pleasure to tell you that you are now man and wife together. Oh, don't get up, love. How are you feeling? Fine. Oh, no twinges yet, then? No. Oh, never mind. Listen, I've sent Phil over to pick up Aunt Sarah and a few friends of mine. Her car's on the blink. I hope you don't mind. No, Peggy. And I promised Phil I'd look after you. Is there anything you need? I'm looking after Kath. Oh, right. Well, I'd better get back, then. I've got a huge crowd coming. Everyone who's anyone. Oh, it's nice. Better get back and put your face on there. She don't look a day over 60. She's 54. Come on. <laughs> oh, Pat, you are <laughs> wicked. <laughs> oh. Kath, what's up, love? What's the matter? There you go. Lovely, thanks. Maybe what next called Melanie and asked her to come over. Melanie? Yeah, my midwife. <laughs> the, uh, the phone number of the hospital's by the phone. They'll contact her. Well, let's get you upstairs no, first. No, you just call her. I'll be all right. Right. <laughs> oh. Oh. I knew it. 
I want to go to the hospital. I'm scared. Okay, don't be scared, love. Melanie's on her way. She said I was to stay with you. Just call an ambulance, will you? No, Melanie will be here in a second. Now, Pat, just do it. Yes. Oh, thank God you're here. I've called the ambulance. She's upstairs. Yeah. Contractions are every couple of minutes now. It happens so quickly. She's sure there's something wrong. Uh, oh, 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 It's all right, oh, Kathy. Oh, you're oh, doing fine. Uh, now everything's going yeah, to be okay. Yeah, Let's yeah, get you onto the bed yeah. so I can have a look at you. Uh, Would you put down the bed covers, please? Oh, sure. Okay, now. Well, uh, that's it, Kathy. You'll be all right, Kathy. Yeah. She will, won't she? Of course she will. I want Phil. Where is he, Pat? He's coming up. I'm on his way. <sighs> Kathy, I'm just going to listen to the baby's heart now, all right? Mm. The heart beats fine, Kath. Where's that ambulance? It's too late for that. Let's prop her up on the bed. Kathy, we're going fine. to try and make you a little bit more comfortable, love, all right? Sit forward for me, <laughs> will you? Sorry you had to make so many pickups, but better late than never, eh, Phil? Yeah. Look, uh, you go inside, I'm gonna go pop some cake. Oh, no, you won't. Come on, let me buy you a drink. You deserve it. Come on, Phil, your auntie Salad's is. There you go, girl. Oh. That's it, Kathy. Oh. Give me one more push. Yes, I am. Come on, oh, come on. Oh, love. They're here. I don't think we need them. The past. Can you tell them to wait? That's great. Oh, I'm going to be a grandmother! Mom! What are you doing? Let him go, Mum. Leave him. Bill! Your baby's got some hair. <laughs> come. 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 Is that your son, Phil? <laughs> it's a boy. Yeah. Hello, son. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy's been arrested. What? Yeah, for the shooting. I can hardly believe it. I'm going to keep the kids. Well, how come? Right. Ros and Annie got John Valicute to make a statement from prison. He's implicated her. She's not going to get out of this one. Oh, Ian. <laughs> yeah. What do you think you're doing in your car park there? Oi! Are you sure you're doing the right thing? It's still time to change your mind. You and me are just the same, Ian. We've always thought there'd be someone there for us because we didn't think we were strong enough to make it on our own. Well, we both know different now, don't we? We're survivors. You bet. Such a strange feeling, being freer. I'm going to make the most of it. I love you, Mum. I swore I wasn't going to do this. I couldn't let you go without saying it. I mean, all the times I've let you down and hurt you. Just stop it, all right? Don't you dare put yourself down. I am so proud of you. And I know if your dad was here, he'd say the same. You and Ben are the best things that have ever happened to me in my life. Every man I've ever known counts for nothing next to you two. I love you to death. Come here. Come on. Otherwise, you're going to miss your plane. All right, I'll ring you as soon as I get there. Yeah. No, don't watch me, will you? We just go. See you, mate. Have fun. <laughs> Phil, what the hell are you doing here? Where is she? She's gone through. It's too late. No, it ain't. Phil, don't do this. Don't do this. I've got to talk to her. Just let her go. I mean, for the first time ever, she's doing what she really wants to do. What are you going to do? Drag her back and make her miserable again? Is that what you really want? You're never going to make her happy, and you know Look, it. I don't want to have to hit you in. Yes, you do. You always do. So come on, what are you waiting for? It's your answer to everything, and this is what she is finally getting away from. I mean, do you love her? I know you say you do, but do you really love her? Because if you do, you'll let her go, and just for once in your life, you'll do the decent thing. So what's it going to be? Hey, hey, 
flight 710 to Amsterdam and connecting flights to Cape Town and other intercontinental destinations is now boarding. Will those passengers either come in on, or with That's small us. children please come Watch this. I'm off. And there's these things. There you go. Oh, thanks, guy. These are books, are they? Don't know any of these. <laughs> you do, you I don't know. Don't I'll leave you to it, shall I? Oh, where are you going? There's your sheet. Look. You go for him. You've got to get him sweeties. Evening. You look nice. I'm meeting Nina. Again? This is getting serious. What about you? Going out tonight, seeing as Phil's looking after Ben? No such luck. Ian seeing Melanie, so I'm playing Granny. That's what I'm good for these days. Don't be silly. Well, have a nice evening. Grant! Cathy. What happened? Come and sit down in here. Come on, let me have a look at that. Didn't have anywhere else to go. Who did this to you? DeMarco. Trying to stick up for that slag Nina. Nina? She saw me coming, didn't she? I really know how to pick him, don't I? Whatever it is, Grant, I'm sure you can sort it out. I've got nothing to say to her anymore. I can't believe you're saying that. I don't know why I bother. I think I'd have learnt my lesson with Tiffany, wouldn't you? No one finds it easy, Grant. We all get let down. We all make mistakes. Not like I do. Well, if it's any comfort, I've just been sitting here thinking about my latest disaster. You don't deserve another one. No. I brought it all on myself this time. I don't believe that. Any man that loses you is a fool. Now, that's what I came home to hear. That's the truth. Where's he come? Where's he come? Where's he come? Where's he come? Wow! There he is. There he is. Yes. Wow! Ah, yes. Such a good boy. Yes, you are. Why did you go, Kath? If you'd stayed, none of this would have happened. Grant. You know I love you, don't you? I love you too. Time to go. Ashford Tower, Golf India, Oscar, Oscar India, ready for departure. Oscar India, take one, take one, take one, take one, take one, take So who's she, the cavalry? Bring your brother along fair enough, Phil, but the uh, long bit from Charlie's address. I'm Ronnie Mitchell. You look like you're dead. Gav. Get out. Don't seem like she wants to. Yeah, that's why she's been calling me all the time, trying to get away from you every chance she gets. You don't know nothing about this. You don't know nothing about us. Now move. I know this ain't Kathy. Hiding behind your back. I say boot to a goose. Now get out, Calf. Come on. You don't have a right little number on her, don't you? This isn't anything to do with me, neither. This is for Ben and Ian. Cathy understands it would be dangerous for them, her coming back. Uh, what are you saying, Phil? What if it's straight? 
He ain't all bad. You don't know him. I know he's no good for you. Look at what a mess you're in, Kathy. And I know you don't want that life. Just listen to them. I mean, he's bending one ear, he's bending the other. Just think about it. What do you want? What's best for you? We gotta go, Kathy. I want to do the right thing by my boys. Don't I at least owe them the truth? No, I can't do it anymore, Gav. I can't keep living like this. We leave now. And don't look at him. He was the one who kicked you out in the first place. Last thing he wants is you back rocking the boat. Listen, we can sort this. What? Just walk away and we'll sort it out. Don't listen to him, Kathy. He ain't got a clue, not a single clue what we're up against. Think of your kids. They're what matters. Not me, not you. We can't take any chances. Not with him still out there. So I will do whatever it takes to protect Ben and Ian. You know that. He's a liar. He can't help you. I'm sorry, Gav. Gavin? I'm sorry. Kathy! Just leave her alone! Oh, I have met so many men like you. You are... You are just like my dad. But you know what? I walked away. And so is she. Cheese and pickle. Basic. You must be in some mess to be holding up in a filthy garage with a cheese and pickle sandwich. I don't care who's after you. I don't care who wants your blood. But if you don't step out in front of me right now and tell me exactly what you've got my husband into, I will drag you out by your eyelids! Sharon, it's been a while. Ian went to South Africa to bury you. His mum, who he worshipped and adored. And then Ben. He was just a little boy taken from his home, brought to a strange country, a father he didn't remember. I knew Phil and Ian would look after him. I knew he'd be OK. Grief, that loss, okay. I don't think Ben's ever got over it. Sharon, I know we've got a lot of bad history, but you think you could just ease off a bit? No, I don't think I can. Because you see, all this talk about this husband and how he had you under his control. Well, you don't look like a woman who's just escaped a bad marriage. You look good. Don't reckon much to your wardrobe choice, but yeah, you look well. You see, Phil might buy this wide-eyed, wobbly lip, helpless act, but it don't wash with me. You can't say what they want. Oh, yes, I can, because I know what it'd be like for them. I've been there. Apparently, worship, popping a pedestal comes into your life and you think it's the answer to your prayers, but it's not. It's just heartache and betrayal. You lie to them, you see, your sons. The worst lie ever. And no sob story about your husband or terrible life can ever make up for that. And they don't need you now. They've got used to being without you. They've got me now. So, the best thing that you can do is let them carry on believing that you're this amazing mum they lost in a tragic accident. Let them look at your photo and smile. Keep your secret. You just stay in your grave. Hmm? You stay dead. Be told. Go through you! Do you know how far you got away from my husband? Do you? I know how far he's on wall at high speed. If I could have been killed, I suppose. But you know that I was at that first because I've been pushed as far as far as I could go. So do not push me, Shadow. And do not tell me. Cos I've had it up to here with being 
Tito! Oh. Oh. Now! Now! We really are done! <coughs> Trying to be romantic. Oh, yeah. Height of romance right now, isn't it? <laughs> Hope Ian keeps his place up to the health code. Stop joking around. What's the matter? I don't like all this sneaking about. Well, ain't you done this before? No. But I've had it done to me, though. You're not the other woman, Cathy. You're the only woman. What about me? Oh, no. I've got a line up outside. Didn't you see him on your way in? Go on, pick them, <laughs> don't I? Can't you say anything nice? I, I want to, but... I'm all ears. I can't. You think I can let myself feel anything while we do this? Well, I have to keep on lying to everyone I care about. I mean, how can it even be real when it's like this? It's real to me. And to me, but... Yeah? Right. I better go then. To do what? To talk to Shirley. What? What? Ian. After all we've been through, you bring this on us? She wasn't to know. Know what? The restaurant got broken into. When? This morning. I took equipment from the kitchen. But I swear, I locked up Ian. It's not that, Cathy. It's... Well, what did they take exactly? I mean, have you made a police report? Yep. And they're going to want to talk to you. Why? Well, I mean, you were the one who locked up with the cameras running and everything. Yeah, I did. I swear. Yeah, that's great. It's just a shame but the camera that's supposed to be pointing at the back door was pointing the wrong way. Let me check the footage. You come in in the morning and you turn the camera in the kitchen away. The police need to speak to you, and without a supportive crime report, we're not going to be able to claim on the insurance. I mean, aren't we all trying to be better, to put the past behind us, to move forward? Yeah, and what exactly have I done to stop that, Ian? You think I'm an idiot, don't you? Look, talking like this isn't going to help anyone. Yeah, and Jane's right, so I don't have to listen to any more of this. I've told you I'm sorry about the break-in and that I will talk to the police. There's nothing more I can do. It's not just that. Oh, well, what then? What exactly have I done now, Ian? I saw you on camera before you turned it away. So what? You with a man. What? She's got a special friend. Haven't you, Gran? And I know who it is. Full length pool. Sydney apartment. A place in the Cotswolds. Where there's somewhere else you'd like to see. You only need to say the word. I want to look after you, Cathy. I want to spend my last few months with you. I want you. Oh, fool. I always have. Cathy, if you can't go into this with trust, then I I've been thinking we could make it a more formal, um, business arrangement. Um, I can pay you for your time. What do you say? I think you'd have saved yourself an awful lot of effort if you just asked me in the first place. But 
You're no Richard Gere. And I'm definitely no Julia Roberts. What? Well, you can't force yourself on me, so you want to pay me for it. You know, you know that's not what I meant. And I say... No! No! no. Thank you very much. But I said no then, and I say no now. You sad, deluded, pathetic old man. But destroy the square so I've got nothing to lose. No, Kevin! I have friends. I have a life. And I will always belong here. Do so you get this? If I ever see you again, I will find the biggest, sharpest knife. And I will cut it off. And I will serve it to you in a sandwich. If you don't believe me, look in my eyes. Look in my eyes, James. James. Oh. We all die alone, James. It's inevitable. You can say what you like and you can put in all the effort you like. But the facts do not change. You are going to hell. So go to hell. But why so tense, Mum? No one died. I'll wait. Oh, we really run out of booze, have we? Today was meant to be about honouring family. Well, Mel's a diva. I'm a gay and diva's all right, I think. Now, forget Mel. What are you doing getting Martin involved with stolen cars? It's just banter. No, I heard every word, Ben. It wasn't just banter. Look, I know you're no saint, but threatening family? That's not right. Oh, but faking your own death, abandoning us, that is, that's all right. Oh, change the record, love. Oh, life's so unfair. Poor little Ben. You know why I did what I did. An evil man made me, pulled me away from my family, ruined mine and my children's lives. Any of this starting to sound familiar? You know, you are turning into someone I don't like. And not just me. Even Callum sink the jumping ship. Everything that happened to you, you asked for it. Martin, too, because the thing with you weak people is you just love being abused. Oh. <laughs> I hope to God that you never live to be ashamed of your own child. <laughs>